Hey everybody, John Nelson with Haas Automation here today to give you some tips on using dial indicators and dial test indicators. Although the names are very similar, there's a big difference between dial indicators and dial test indicators. This is a dial indicator. It's also known as a travel indicator or a drop indicator because these indicators have a lot of range. This one is 10 millimeters. That's just under 400 thousandths of an inch. Other indicators have up to 100 millimeters of travel or 10 times the travel of this particular one. Dial test indicators, on the other hand, have very small travel. We'll talk more about them in a minute. This dial indicator has 10 millimeters of travel and graduations of 10 microns. Therefore, one revolution of the large needle is one millimeter. Each revolution of the large needle is registered on the smaller dial. As I push the plunger up through one revolution, we see the small dial reads one. Another revolution on the large dial marks two on the small dial, and so on. Now let's look in the case. The first thing you'll notice is the lug back plate. The indicators come with a flat plate installed. If clamping on the stem, leave the flat plate on. If you need to attach the indicator to a stand using a screw, remove the flat plate and replace it with the lug back plate provided in the case. The first tip when using any indicator is to make sure the stylus or contact point is tight. These are replaceable items that screw on, so always check that the tip is tight if you feel something is wrong with the indicator or the reading it's giving you. It's really important when attaching the indicator to a stand or any other fixture that the stem and plunger are parallel with the axis of measurement. You won't have that issue if you're using an indicator stand like this with a base and a pole. The indicator connects at the stem and it's not possible to introduce error. But with a stand like this, where there's a movable joint where the indicator attaches, misalignment like this or this will give an incorrect reading on the indicator dial because of cosine error. We'll talk more about that when we look at dial test indicators. If you have a square handy, Use it as a visual reference to make sure the indicator stem and plunger are perpendicular to the base in this direction and in this direction. Now, with a setup like this, typically a stack of gauge blocks is used to set the indicator to the nominal dimension to be measured. In my example, the dimension from the bottom face to this step is 10 millimeters and the tolerance is plus or minus 0.05 millimeters. The dimension from that step up to this surface is nine millimeters plus or minus 0.1 millimeter. I bring the indicator down on a 10 millimeter gauge block until the needle is pointing up to 12 o'clock. Always remove the gauge block and then set the indicator back on it to verify you're getting repeatable readings. Now I'll adjust the tolerance markers, one to plus 0.05 and the other to minus 0.05. This makes it really easy to see if we're approaching or even violating the tolerance limits. Let's check the part. <laughs> I sure hope it's in tolerance. Ah, look at that, right on the money. My 10 millimeter dimension only deviates 0.01, so that's quite good. Now let's check the nine millimeter dimension. Since the needle is almost exactly on zero when the indicator is touching my starting surface, I don't need to rotate the bezel to reestablish zero. I can just lift the plunger and slide the workpiece under. Now, we see that the small dial shows nine, which is nine millimeters, and the large needle is on plus three graduations. So this dimension is 9.03 millimeters, well within the tolerance. Now, if the zero position on this surface is off, I can rotate the bezel to reset the zero point 
and measure from there. I just need to make sure I reset my zero with the gauge block before measuring the first dimension on another part. Okay, now let's see how dial test indicators work. The main difference between dial indicators and dial test indicators is the travel range. Dial test indicators have much less range than dial indicators and some are capable of much finer measurement resolution. We carry two different style of dial test indicators that work slightly different from each other. The first is the standard dial test indicator. These indicators take direct readings in either direction, meaning we can depress the stylus in this direction and the needle will move clockwise. We can also take a reading by depressing the stylus in the opposite direction and the needle still moves clockwise. This is what's known as bi-directional constant clockwise movement with automatic reversing. Twice range dial test indicators do not have constant clockwise needle rotation. The needle changes direction based on the stylus movement. The twice range indicators typically have twice the amount of travel range as the other types of dial test indicators. Typically two revolutions of the needle, so there's a secondary dial and needle indicating whether the larger needle is in the first revolution or the second. Holding a dial test indicator can be done a number of ways, but probably the most common is with a magnetic base stand. For my money, these universal arm lock style stands are the very best. The magnet is powerful with an on off switch and holds very well on cylindrical surfaces like the side of the spindle housing on a vertical mill. This one knob loosens all the joints and allows me to position the indicator at just the right angle I need. When I like the position, I tighten the knob and all the joints are tightened in place. I love it. Attaching the indicator is great too. It's super versatile. The end connection has a dovetail that matches the dovetail on all the dial test indicators. If you choose to use one of the holes in the end connection on the stand, just use the attachments that come with the dial test indicator. This end attachment has fine adjustment screw for gently touching the indicator stylus to the workpiece. Our other models of universal magnetic bases have a fine adjustment screw down by the base. Either way, it's a super handy feature to have. Okay, I've got my indicator mounted on the mag base and the mag base is attached to the spindle head, so I'm ready to take some readings. There are some very important tips to remember when using these indicators. First, before you start, gently rotate the stylus to make sure it's tight. As I mentioned before, the stylus or indicator tip coming loose is a common occurrence and should be the first thing you check if you suspect a bad reading from your indicator. Also, make sure your indicator stand, mag base, and indicator connections are tight. These are very precise, sensitive devices, especially the ones that measure down to two microns or one ten thousandth of an inch. You want to make sure your holding setup is rigid. Next, always approach the surface you're going to measure with caution and use the lowest jog increment if you're moving a machine axis. It's fine to come straight down on a surface, but try to avoid depressing the stylus to its maximum travel or beyond. Gently pick up the stylus until the needle reaches a good location where you can see it well. These indicators are sensitive to movement and rotating the bezel while the stylus is touching something may cause the needle to bounce around or even change location of the needle. My tip for avoiding this when positioning the indicator by jogging machine axes is to rotate the bezel so the dial position I want to read is in clear sight before touching the stylus to the surface. Then I jog the machine to move the needle to the dial position I want. 
As I mentioned earlier, it's always a good idea to move the indicator off the surface you're measuring and then place it back on the surface to ensure you're getting repeatable readings. This brings us to another important tip. Always move the part from under the indicator toward the stylus tip, moving away from the body. The reason is, if your stylus is too low or the surface is too high, measurement from under the indicator body will safely lift the stylus or indicator. If you move the indicator onto the part from the side or from the front and your stylus is too low, you can damage the indicator. Always approach the part from above or underneath the indicator. When rotating cylindrical workpieces, always rotate so the surface comes from under the body, touches the tip, and continues rotating away from the body. We do this for the same reason. In case there's a keyway slot or other imperfection on the surface we're measuring that might damage the indicator. Okay, now let's talk about the cosine effect. The cosine effect, or cosine error, with regard to dial test indicators is an inaccuracy introduced into the reading when the angle of the indicator stem is not in the correct position for that indicator. For accurate readings with most dial test indicators, the stylus needs to be parallel to the surface being measured. The angle of the stylus to the indicator body makes no difference. Also, make sure the ball is the only part of the stylus touching the workpiece. There are correction factors in the instructions that come with the indicators. Use the correction factors when the stem angle cannot be parallel to the surface being measured. For example, if the stylus is at a 30 degree angle to the surface, the correction factor is 0.87. If the indicator reading is a thou and a half or 0.038 millimeters, multiply the reading by the correction factor of 0.87. The actual measurement is a thou and three tenths or 0.33 millimeters. Haas twice range indicators with this unique shape measure accurately when the stylus angle is 12 degrees. Again, this is stylus angle from the surface being measured, not stylus angle from the body of the indicator. This is a good way to estimate that 12 degree angle. When the stylus is pointing straight out of the body, parallel to the bottom of the indicator body, set the indicator so the surface of the dial is horizontal to the surface being measured. This also applies if the surface being measured is vertical. The stylus needs to be 12 degrees off the vertical axis to measure accurately without a correction factor. Now, there are two common ways of measuring with a dial test indicator. The first is to measure one surface, set zero on the indicator dial, move to another surface, and then take the reading from the indicator dial. This type of reading is affected by the cosine effect. Stem angle should be parallel to the surfaces or at 12 degrees, depending on the indicator used when taking this type of reading. You can remove the cosine effect if your stylus can't be positioned parallel to the surface or at 12 degrees by taking the measurement using your machine's coordinates. This also works with measurements read using a height gauge. To take this type of measurement using a dial test indicator on a Haas machine, attach the indicator mag base on the spindle head or turret if you're using this on a lathe. Set the indicator on the first surface to be measured by jogging the machine axes. Turn the bezel on the indicator to place the zero mark right where the needle position is. Press the position key on your Haas control, then scroll to the operator position tab. Press the axis letter you want to measure and then press the origin key. 
This will set the readout to zero. Now, jog the axis to the next surface to measure. Change the jog increment on the machine to keep the finest movement and keep jogging until the indicator reads zero. Now your actual measurement will be shown on the operator position screen for that axis. If you started with the indicator needle at zero and you jog the machine until the needle returns to zero, the cosine error has no effect on the machine readout. You've removed the cosine error of the stylus because the angle of the stylus is exactly the same when the indicator needle is in the exact location on the indicator dial. The difference between the two surfaces is actually measured by the machine's digital readout or the height gauge, depending on which method you used. Okay, that about wraps it up. You can always get more information on indicators and dial test indicators at HaasTooling.com. Thank you for watching and we'll see you next time.